very much, uh, Ali. That's a very aggressive target. I'm afraid we need a paradigm shift <laughs> in order to embrace the, uh, the CCI. Well, uh, the third speaker to be invited on stage uh, is a good friend. That's why you notice I've not bring any notes to <laughs> introduce him. Mr. Barry Jung is a chairman of the Hong Kong Mercantile Exchange, but I suppose today uh, he's speaking in his capacity as a chairman of the Urban Renewal Authority. Uh, the URA was established as an independent statutory uh, body in 2001 to uh, carry out urban redevelopment in Hong Kong. And in uh, almost uh, decades of existence, it has not only uh, helped in many redevelopment projects, but have also extended its commitment and work into uh, other areas, including promoting green buildings in the new projects and also in heritage conservation. But I'm just wondering whether in your capacity as a mercantile exchange, Barry, that one day you'll do carbon trading on the exchange floor. Uh, so let me uh, in invite Barry to come on stage and uh, we'll see what uh, URA has to share with us. Thank you, Barry. Thank you very much, uh, Secretary Lam. Uh, welcome uh, to Hong Kong, everybody. Um, by the way, uh, for those who are not familiar with Hong Kong, uh, uh, Secretary Lam is uh, Hong Kong's most outstanding public official. And, uh, and uh, we are very thankful for her uh, strong leadership and, uh, and very proud of her many achievements. Since we don't have a lot of time, uh, what I want to do is to make a simple point uh, that urban renewal can play a significant role in the reduction of uh, greenhouse gases. Uh, let me just explain why. Uh, if you look at um, the OECD countries, I think uh, buildings account for roughly uh, one third of all uh, greenhouse gas emissions. But in Hong Kong, that number is twice as high uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, if you look at the, the breakdown, in Hong Kong, 90% uh, uh, of our greenhouse emission is accounted for by electricity uh, generation. And about 90% uh, 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 of the electricity is consumed in buildings. So in a way, buildings account for almost 60% uh, of greenhouse gas emissions in Hong Kong. And that's roughly twice the level of the uh, OECD level. And so we feel uh, that's where, uh, because of the role of buildings uh, is so significant in the uh, 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 emission of uh, greenhouse gases, uh, that's we think uh, in if we want to significantly reduce greenhouse gas emissions, um, clearly development plays an important role. And we feel that that's where urban renewal comes in. And that's uh, where uh, urban renewal authority in Hong Kong can play a significant role. Uh, as Kerry uh, earlier mentioned, the urban renewal authority is a statutory body set up about 10 years ago uh, to deal with the problem of urban decay. In Hong Kong, we have uh, roughly 42,000 buildings. Uh, many of them are old and dilapidated. Approximately 16,000 buildings are over uh, 30 years old. And many of them are, uh, have uh, been uh, neglected in terms of maintenance. So many of them are quite dilapidated. Our uh, mission is to uh, arrest that urban decay and to improve the living conditions of people living in those buildings. Many of them are our poorest uh, citizens. Now we, uh, since the uh, formation of the Urban Renewal, uh, Renewal Authority almost 10 years ago, uh, we took uh, environmental sustainability very seriously. And we have been uh, working quite hard to incorporate uh, environmental sustainability in everything that we do. And in fact, uh, uh, Earlier, uh, 
the Secretary for Development mentioned the government five, won five platinum green buildings awards. And uh, I'm happy to say that we have done uh, even better than the government. We've been able to uh, uh, win six platinum awards uh, in the last five years. And uh, we, we are a strong believer uh, in that with proper planning and des design, a uh, new build can achieve a much better, uh, can achieve much better ventilation and also more efficient energy use. Now last year, uh, we actually uh, uh, took that belief to a much higher level. Uh, we uh, uh, actually, with the help of Andrew's firm, Arrow, uh, we developed a comprehensive uh, environmental policy uh, to be used in our new buildings. Uh, we set out um, our policy on environmental sustain sustainability um, uh, that will become uh, a core of everything that we do. Uh, this policy drew on the experience of many overseas cities and is based on the latest environmental technology as well as advice of experts in the field. Uh, roughly speaking, uh, uh, this policy covers six areas. Uh, one is energy efficiency, uh, water conservation, uh, use of environmentally friendly building materials, greening, the collection of recyclable waste, and also the reduction of construction waste and environmental nuisance during construction. And we're not just uh, uh, saying those things, we're actually putting them uh, in, uh, in action. Uh, those guidelines have been translated into pages and pages of technical notes that we will use in our uh, construction projects. Uh, we estimate that uh, by incorporating some of these features, uh, it will cost uh, additional two to three percent of additional construction costs. But we feel that uh, uh, doing that uh, will be worthwhile. Uh, to give you an example, uh, we currently we are doing a fairly sizable uh, project uh, by Hong Kong standard uh, uh, in nearby Wan Chai called Li Tong Street. Uh, the project has about 800,000 square feet or so and uh, covering an area of about 80,000 square feet. We are now um, uh, in the construction stage. We are incorporating uh, our new environmental policy. We estimate that when it, this building is finished, uh, we will reduce carbon emission by about 23%, uh, equivalent to planting 170,000 trees in Hong Kong, roughly 20% of all the trees planted in Hong Kong every year. Now this is just what one building can do. Uh, imagine if we are able to, to do all of that in all of our new buildings. But again, to put this in perspective, in Hong Kong, we have 42,000 buildings, but we only put up about 500 to 600 new buildings a year. So the, re the, really, um, the real low-hanging fruits, I think, like in the existing stock of buildings. And I understand this morning there was a session on uh, retrofitting new buildings. Uh, just to give you some uh, uh, statistics in Hong Kong, earlier I mentioned we have 16,000 blocks of buildings that are over 30 years old. In most countries, 30 years doesn't seem a long time, but in Hong Kong, many of our buildings, after 30 years of use, become quite run down. Uh, many of them, uh, uh, in fact, among these uh, uh, 16,000 blocks, uh, there are about 4,000 blocks that are over 50 years old. Many of them have been rated as uh, in very poor conditions. So, as you imagine, they are highly energy inefficient and uh, one of our main uh, uh, charters is to uh, help rehabilitate some of these buildings. So we feel that in this area, there's a, a lot we can do. We are already helping uh, over 1,800 buildings to rehabilitate, to, uh, to do the necessary maintenance. And we are now uh, doing a big study to find out uh, what we can do uh, when we maintain old buildings, what we can do to make them more energy efficient. Now there are obviously a lot of constraints when you deal with uh, existing buildings, but we feel that uh, uh, with, uh, with creativity and ingenuity we can uh, come up with measures that can uh, significantly help us reduce greenhouse gas emissions in our existing stock of buildings. 
So uh, uh, to conclude, uh, urban renewal, uh, particularly in a context uh, like Hong Kong, can play a significant role in the reduction of uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And uh, we at the UIA uh, feel that uh, there's a big role for us to play uh, going forward. Thank you very much. Well, uh, thank you very much, Barry. Uh, I think it is uh, very relevant for uh, Barry to mention also the old buildings, uh, because although the theme of uh, this afternoon's session is the future of new buildings, I think doing something about the old buildings is also uh, as important as the new buildings. Uh, take, for example, in Hong Kong, uh, we still have 1,400 private flattered factory buildings but as you know, most of our manufacturing ha has gone to the mainland. So instead of demolishing over a thousand rather relatively young industrial buildings for redevelopment, uh, the government has decided that we should uh, roll out incentives uh, to encourage the retrofitting and the revitalization of industrial buildings, which the Hong Kong Green Building Council has kindly helped us to draw up a green guide. Uh, to guide the retrofitting of industrial buildings in Hong Kong. So uh, before I open the floor for discussion, I would uh, like to uh, invite Andrew and his capacity as chairman of the Hong Kong Green Building Council to say a few words first. Andrew. Thank you, uh, Mr. Lam. Uh, I'd just like to add uh, a few words, really. Um, firstly, I think Mr. Lam has been uh, terribly modest. Uh, apart from what she just said about the industrial buildings. In fact, when you realize that her policy of allowing the revitalization of industrial buildings in Hong Kong, the total uh, number of buildings uh, in industrial buildings is actually, if they were all wholesale converted, would literally double Hong Kong's commercial space. Now, that provides a splendid opportunity to uh, have more green buildings and that is a very, very important point to make. Secondly, uh, under Mrs. Lam's uh, leadership, uh, in fact, the planning department of Hong Kong has been carrying out some uh, planning work for what we call a new development areas that actually utilizes uh, what uh, Alien uh, has just mentioned, low carbon planning, integrated planning principles. So again, Hong Kong is not that far behind the world, in fact. And um, last but not least, the point is that uh, also under the planning department, uh, one piece of what I would call uh, world-leading uh, work is being done under the leadership of uh, Professor Edward Ng, which is to produce an uh, urban microclimatic map, which eventually would help us planning our city. So those pieces of work to us is terribly important, but I would say it's fairly advanced uh, on a world stage as well. The second point I want to make is the government also have a release for consultation our strategy for combating climate change. And to be very brief, direct contribution from our buildings, new and existing, under that strategy account for, if you like, only 8% of the total carbon reduction. And the Hong Kong Green Building Council think that we can do better than that. So I would not take any more of your time, and we will open the discussion.